Welcome to the Non-Essential Podcast. I'm Steve Gibson. I'm Ben Matlock. And we made it back. Yeah, you tried to throw me off on the countdown. Again. I know, I went like you, fast. You, and... you went fast and then you went up-tempo. Like, with the yeah. final, the one, two, a three. Like, the you, three. <laughs> I, just, I was like, what the fuck? I was trying to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop. One, a two, a three, fucking... Those commercials were fucked up. It was like, uh, like, why is the kid asking animals to begin with <laughs> how long it takes to get to the fucking end of a sucker? Because like, he didn't. He thought he grabbed a tootsie roll pop, but it was his mom's edible. Did he? Did <laughs> could it be the reason he wasn't testing it for himself is because that's the worst way to eat one of those? <laughs> I, the eighties and nineties was a golden time for commercials. Really? How, how many looks like I, I just want like a bear to, to be like, who gives a fuck? Just eat it, dude. <laughs> um, but yeah, welcome back to the show where we tell each other stories. Um, lately, it's been a lot of horror mm-hmm. fiction. Uh, yeah. And we didn't even talk about what, who was doing what today, but I, I brought a story. Um, I just I kind of assume you always seem to have one. I do have one as well. Not that I wrote, but uh, yeah, I, I've got one saved that I thought was interesting. But I'd much prefer it if you had one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, this story I, it's not mine. It's not an original. Um, but this is one I've actually I actually kind of liked uh, when I first heard it. Um, and it took me a while to fucking remember what the name of it was and who wrote it and where I found it. Cause it wasn't uh, a straight up creepy pasta. Like this was submitted for some just online. I think it was Jezebel, uh, that website, they were doing like a horror story contest and somebody put this one in and, and it's really good. Uh, or at least I remember it being pretty good. Uh, it's not too long. So who knows? We might hit 15 minutes and just be the fuck out of here. Uh, <laughs> well, we're still at that point where technically our due date is Sunday, so we're recording on a Thursday, so four days. But, like, that could be good that it's short because it might be like, okay, you're having contractions. Wait, we got to finish the show. <laughs> well, put the put the baby up to the headphones and I'll finish the story. <laughs> Look, there's, a, do. there's a wine cork in the kitchen. Go grab it. <laughs> um. So yeah, uh, this story is called Look At Me. It's from a user named Theater Guy. Um, And we'll link to it and stuff so people can find it as usual. And and apparently uh, this came from like a set of like, this is a true story and I don't know how true it is. It doesn't sound true at all um, by the end. (laughs) Um, It sounds like complete bullshit, but uh, it does sound like one of those stories like something creepy happens and then kind of what I do, you just halfway through you're like all right that's all the real material time to make up like (laughs) another half of this so i have a story here and sure and that's not like a oh you stupid writer that's cheating i mean hollywood does the same thing it's like based on a true story there really once was a guy named tom right (laughs) great yeah and most most like horror movies are like i think it was like the amityville horror whatever they were like Mm -hmm. this is a true story but it's made all made up but it was like the true story turned out to be total bullshit so yeah yeah so it's so. like two coatings of fucking lies to keep you entertained all right so this is look at me one evening my mother and stepfather had gone out to some event maybe it was an extended dinner or concert it's hard to remember I had stayed at home to work on a paper that was due the next day. I was one of those kids who procrastinated until the last minute and spent the whole night working at the desk in my room. To give you a picture of the room, my desk faces a wall and sits next to a small window that's on the same wall. And from where I sit, my back faces my doorway. While I was working... That's that's trouble right there. Like... Yeah, you you should... Yeah, never comfortable when my back's to a doorway. Although my back's to a doorway right now. And I have headphones on. I couldn't. You, if you want to murder me, do it during the podcast because I can't hear you coming. See, my door's to my side, and I always make sure I have three knives and a gun taped <laughs> under my desk. Um, you know that's that's just safety. Yeah. <laughs> 
While I was working, I was wearing these great headphones that I had gotten for my birthday, the kind that are noise cance- are noise canceling. Um, for some reason, I read great headphones and just imagined these like massive like JRPG <laughs> equipment <laughs> headphones. Yeah, like the great sword. I got great headphones. <laughs> yeah, it's just like you have to like strap it to your back to wear them. <laughs> My parents left the house around 6 p.m., and the whole time they were gone, I sat at my desk, blasting music through my headphones and writing my essay. Occasionally, I would take breaks and watch the rain and lightning outside my window. We lived in Houston at the time, and there was a big storm that night. I never left my desk. It, it, you know, it, like, for a se- like if I, if I hadn't been to Texas, him bringing up Houston wouldn't have made a lot of sense to me. But Texas gets, like, the most fucked storms uh if you've if you ever go there or if you've ever been like, oh i i plan to not do that but yeah because like a storm in washington like we get rain all the time and it, you know you you're used to it and most of the time most of the time it's not even that bad of a storm it's just some rain in texas if it starts raining everybody starts to be like we we might die we we don't know <laughs> what to do <laughs> If there's lightning, it's like there's actually a real chance that lightning is targeting you. I like that for being such a like. Oh, I'm a typical kid that procrastinates till the. Yeah, I I totally. I mean, obviously, with we started the show with okay, who's got what, but um, <laughs> yeah, I like the like contrast of like oh, I'm a slacker procrastinator, and then I worked at my desk all night and didn't yeah, get up once. I was gonna say like, this dude just hammers out an essay the night before like i procrastinate and then i'm like oh fuck and i worry about it the whole day and then i have like one good hour of writing that yeah. like kind of gets me to the finish line at least my parents returned around 11 p.m and at some point late in the even- evening i had removed my headphones so when my parents came home coincidentally just a few minutes after i had taken them off i clearly heard the garage door open and them enter the house Seconds after I hear the mentor, I hear my mother shout my name, Adrian! She screams, what on earth? What happened here? Confused, I get out of my chair and start walking through the house to them. There's only a small hallway that separates my room from the living room. Due to my rush to figure out why my mother was yelling, I paid little attention to the hall in the house. After a few moments, I get to my parents. My mom looks livid. She's pointing at the carpet floor, yelling, Was this you? Did you have friends over? I look down, the carpet is ruined. It's covered in muddy footprints. I frantically explain to her that I have no idea how those got here, that I spent the whole night at my desk working on my paper. I watch as her face goes from anger to confusion to fear. We realize that someone else must have entered the house. No, (laughs) no, no. This is obviously a fiction because at first I thought the horror story was going to be getting blamed for something you didn't do because that's I, I remember that clearly as a kid. Yeah, especially having a younger brother. My mom, I, I could have had like on video evidence a burglar sneaking in and tracking butt around. She'd be like, "Yeah, nice try." <laughs> you still <laughs> fucked up my floor, right? Like you, like I could be stabbing you. <laughs> I was like, "Look at the fucking stain you left." You um, had a party, a mud party. <laughs> that's the. I mean, the, you know, if my if I came home and my kid had a mud party, I'd probably walk right out of the house and never talk to him again. <laughs> Just be like, you know, what you do under your own roof is one thing, but you ruined everything in this living room. (laughs) Um, We realize that someone must have entered the house. Quickly, we scan the footprints, trying to make sense of the situation. It only takes a few moments to figure out where they start. Our back door, which we usually left unlocked. Then we notice something else. The footprints started at the back door, but there were no footprints exiting the back door. So, like, I like that, you know, their reaction is to pull out, like, that giant magnifying glass, that old detective (laughs) thing, and follow the footsteps. And instead, like, I I don't know if I told it on this show or the old show, but uh, there was a time where, like, um, my mom called me when I was hanging out with friends. And I'm pretty sure I told you this story, but... uh, she i was hanging out with friends and she called and asked if i had just come home because she heard a gate shut and 
so I was like, no, it must have like the wind must have blew it or somebody like I might have left it open when I left and the wind was blowing it and it just clanged or something. And so we're like, OK, well, that's a little, a little weird. She calls me back almost immediately and somebody opened the sliding glass door to her bedroom. Oh, and, fuck. and so immediately, like I'm leaving me and my friend are leaving to go meet up with some other friends and immediately i'm like okay drive me back to my fucking house now um and we run in <laughs> good for you i would have been like okay take me to mexico well <laughs> i love you mom um it was a good run <laughs> and, and so i run back I, I run back there there was no like checking for footprints or t like we just tore through every room of the house yeah um every closet anywhere i thought somebody could hide and we called the cops well, here's the other, yeah. Well, first I have to get my juvenile joke out of the way because you said there's footprints coming in the back door but none leaving. And everybody knows if you go in the back door, you better not leave, leave. a trace. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> but I like this cartoon idea of if you have mud on your shoes, everywhere you go for the rest of your life leaves footprints. Like the mud wouldn't eventually come off your shoe because it's sticking to the well, floor. Well, it was like, a stormy Houston night, so that's true. if you went in through the back, there was probably mud there. You're probably... I'm picturing him taking like 10 or 15 steps, then stopping, and he's got like a paint roller of mud, and he reapplies it to his feet. I'm totally just seeing like a Pink Panther cartoon of just like the fucking cat just planning shit while Clouseau just fucking goes the wrong <laughs> way. Um... <laughs> but yeah, I just love that reaction. A little cap off to my story. Uh, you know, of course, in that moment, you call cops and cops get a bad rep and shit because uh, cause a lot of them are, you know, really just trying to do a good job. This guy sucked. Um, <laughs> that being said, he like because we he, he looked around and shit, which is all you can ask, really. But then when you're like, you know. So if, you know, if you were in this position, what would you do? And he was like, well, I have a fucking, you know, $20,000 security system. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, then that's not our position, Dick. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what's funny, too. I mean, sidetrack the, the story even more. But when I was uh, in elementary school or maybe just like into middle school, but I think it was still like the last year in elementary school. Me and my brother used to get home like a half hour before my mom because she was a substitute teacher. So, you know, the kids go home on the bus and then they have to finish up, you know, work and then she'd come home. Anyway, uh, one day me and my brother got home and somebody had broken into our house and that was a whole big thing. But when the cops finally showed up, you know, you always have this like expectation, like, oh, they're going to show up and they'll dust for prints and this and that. And they just show up and they're like, yeah, somebody took your stuff. <laughs> It's like, yeah. Yep, you're out of I, stuff. Classic case like, of no stuff. It's like, so you'll call us if you find them, and they basically laugh like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll sure check we with will. the pawn unit. <laughs> um, and like yeah. you said, I, mean, I, I get the, the whole attitude towards cops, and I, whatever. That's a complicated stance for me, but they do try. I mean, they do check pawn shops and they do what they can, but yeah. And most of those situations, it's good luck. We're never going to figure this out because there's nothing to go on. Yeah. But when you're just been the victim of something like that, that is not the note of reassurance you want from the guy in the badge. Yeah. Well, like, you know, it's tough in that situation. Cause it's like, in situations where shit gets stolen because that same friend who was with me that night uh his car got stolen and like they found the car over in idaho um he just like left on the street or whatever and it's like you know in that position it's like i'm not even asking you to catch the guy i'm just like i please try to find the car and they're just like we're probably not gonna find the car and then like the day later it's like yeah idaho found the car so Thank yeah. Idaho. And yeah, it's funny that they acted like that because cars a lot of times do turn up. Now, normally they're like trashed and totaled, but yeah, it's very rare that they're like just like they straight up uh, junk it though. They usually just ride yeah. it until they can't get any more out of it. Right. Um, but but that was weird. He had a lot of 
somebody like I think if I remember right, somebody took a shit in that car. Um, I was going to say that that I worked with a guy that got his car stolen and they found it like a week and a half later and there was just like heroin needles everywhere and just like people whoever took it was just like shitting and pissing in the back seat like multiple yeah. times <laughs> like like you said they basically like just used it as their drug den until they're like okay it's gross in here yeah let's they, go yeah i'm not sure if i just we were joking about the shit story and then i just randomly believed it one day or like that actually happened but like i know people got into his car and just like fucking trashed it and shit and but not even still these were separate incidences so they just did it outside his house and it's, oh i thought that was part of the theft no no like and oddly i think the when the car came back it was probably in better condition than when they had taken it whoever stole it was like man fucking this dude's a slob <laughs> um anywho. so anyway there's following muddy footprints around this this yeah. dude's house so they traced the, the footprints to the back door but there were no, no footprints exiting the back door then we hear something pounding through our house we hear the front door get torn open then slam shut with a sharp wham we all run into the garage and lock the door my mom starts shouting at the police through the phone police come quickly someone's broken into our house after what seems like hours the police arrive an officer stays with us in the garage as his partner goes through the house room by room his partner tells us that it's safe to go back in and that there's no one in the house. That, and that you just heard them break out of your house, dumbasses. Yeah. Like, I, you know, and if you're I'm pin, kidding, I mean, yeah, I'd be freaking out. <laughs> totally I'd be kiss. freaking out. I don't know if my impulse would be like the garage where there's no escape. You know? uh, yeah. Um, but, you know, who who can say like. I you know uh, again uh, another... that, I literally have a another story from real life where a friend thought somebody was breaking into his house and his instinct was to run to the basement. Yeah, <laughs> so I was just yeah. gonna say pull in from real life. I had a long stretch. I, I did talk about this on the show. I had a long stretch where I was terrified of like getting axe murdered, and for some reason I thought the solution was to move my bedroom to the basement where I literally <laughs> could never get away from them. <laughs> so right. and my one hope was that they wouldn't open the obvious basement door <laughs> uh, so, that's probably just a closet leave it alone <laughs> so yeah survival instincts not always the best uh in humans anyway his partner tells us that it's safe to go back in that there's no one in the house then she asks us a question she asks us whose room is down the hall to the left my parents look at me and i tell the officer that it's mine she asks us to follow her down the hall. As we go, it's easy to see that the footprints weave through my house from the back door. They go through the living room, through the small hallway, into my parents' room, which is down the hall to the right, and then turn around towards my room, and they stop in my doorway. Then the officer points at my door, which I had left open the whole night. On it, in black sharpie, was written the following. My log. 847. I see you. 8.53, you forgot to lock the back door. 8.59, you seem focused. 9.24, turn around. 9.47, look at me. 10.15, look at me. 10.37, look at me. 10.49, look at me. Okay, I've cracked the case. This is a podcaster that broke into the house. Yeah. They're like, look at me, goddamn <laughs> it! Yeah, if I do, if I have to take right time here. notes doing this show, it usually gets pretty dark. Like, well, that. I'm just, I'm just saying that it, it's like somebody that's desperate for attention. They're like, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Right. For nearly two hours, someone stood in my doorway watching me. To this day, I shudder to think about what would have happened if I had ever turned around and looked. The end. It was a stripper, and he would have got the night had a night of his life. It could have been the best day ever. <laughs> um, Although her feet were really fucking muddy. Like, so if you're a kid that still lives with your parents and you don't mind being grounded for like months, go get as muddy as you possibly can and see how far you can walk around your house while continuing to leave clear prints. Yeah, like. I'm curious. Like, this is, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can do it. This I, all I want somebody could to be test the it. cover story to him actually having friends over, and like that last <laughs> friend just like bolts out the door, 
and it sets up this whole thing. Like, good thing I wrote this bullshit on my door with Sharpie. It's gonna say where he's tripping balls and he's like talking to himself. Yeah. He thinks he thinks the door is a mirror and it's not looking back. <laughs> Look at me, damn it! Look at me. <laughs> I do like, like I, I the I the log is the best part of the story because there is just something to me terrifying of like a killer oh, yeah. who wants your attention. And won't and then, do anything until he's gone. That's it. the thing. Like, I'm, we're making all these jokes. I'm laughing about it. But I, I agree with you. I like the story. I think it's really good. And I think that it is a really, if we stop being assholes and, like, laughing at it, and you really think about the situation, like, that is kind of terrifying. If something like that were to happen where you all of a sudden found proof that you were being stalked for, like, two hours. Yeah. And then you have to think, like, what if I had turned around? Like, well, I think of just... The reason I think it's a good story, why that's really effective is like it taps into that thing of just like think of all those moments in your house, like where you feel the most safe and you're doing something that is that thing. It takes hours of your time and, you, you know, you're playing a video game, you're watching a movie, you're not even thinking about what's going on in the rest of your house and like what could be there like right because you just assume you're safe it's your house you're there every day you do yeah. you might do this thing all the time why would there be somebody standing behind you with with the cleaver and muddy feet <laughs> um but i do like the 859 note of like oh you seem focused <laughs> it's just like oh i'll come back later yeah. and then a half an hour later all right i'm back and then 20 minutes like you're still ignoring me 20 more Maybe minutes this is rude you know the funny part is he's all freaked out but all it is is he forgot he ordered dominoes and it's the pizza delivery guy like let himself in because he could see them in there and he's like dude well you're losing your tip, tip. you ruined my carpet like no fucking tip for muddy shoes man <laughs> and i just like uh, this the log keeps going like all right if you're gonna fucking be that way i'm gonna go kill your neighbors I like that there's clear footprints all through the house, but then the second you get outside, it's like, well, we lost them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, again, that was by a user on there called Theater Guy. I, if I can narrow it down before the episode goes up to, like, an I actual like to think source. That, and, and there's a good chance of this because – and like I said, we're, we're laughing a lot, but I did like the story a lot. But um, – because it's a kind of a good story and the name's theater guy i'm going to go ahead and credit this to william shakespeare the theater guy mm -hmm. the original theater guy it's one of his lost manuscripts but yeah uh, like that whole thing about just like it, like it's weird well, like you'll you'll be in situations and i talked about my walks to work and shit on an earlier episode and stuff like I, I think I'm never more afraid than I am when I'm in my own place, like by yourself. Yeah, because there's always that one th subconscious thing that gets your uh, the phrase gets your hackles up like a dog. You know, something that makes a hair in the back of your neck stand up for no reason, and it's usually something completely stupid. Like you saw well, a pile of clothes that kind of vaguely res sh out of the corner of your eye, and maybe consciously you don't even know what what did it. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just a very, well, I have dogs too, who are assholes and I think they know that I'm like hyper paranoid about shit. And so like, they, they just start barking at a squirrel or something. I'm like, what, who do you see? <laughs> Who's out there? Oh, see, that just adds to my distraction factor now because we're up to a dog, a bird and a cat with a kid on the way. Yeah. And the funny part is the bird and the cat aren't ours, but they might as well be because they're here all the time. Careful with that cat and that bird. Cause... Oh, that cat loves the bird. It'll it'll just sit and stare, and I don't know what it would do if it was here and we weren't. But, eat, uh, yeah, I, spoiler, it'll eat that fucking bird. It'll try. Um, I don't know if it can get into the cage, but... I have, as a multi-cat and once multi-bird household uh growing up i can tell you a cat can get to that fucking bird <laughs> it'll surprise you what a cat will do to get to a bird to a bird yeah um that's why we I, we don't really want them anymore because they're 
if you've heard the show lately, they're pretty loud. Um, yes. But uh, I'm not really a bird person. Like, I would never hurt this bird I'm, because I'm a... But I might leave the house while the cat is... <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I wouldn't wish harm on it, but I would never purposely buy a bird as a pet. I, 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 I like birds, but it's that thing. I just, like, I need... Dogs are too loud for me, usually, and... That's about the highest I can go with noise. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing, too, is this one's a cockatiel. And I think they can, I mean, they're vocal, but I think they're the, I, well, I know some of them can, like, learn songs and stuff. And, like, so Tara always tries to teach it the Andy Griffith song, and that pisses me off. I'm like, if I want a bird that's going to be making noise, I want it to make bird noises. Like, I'm in a rainforest. If this well, fucker starts. Bird. I want it to sing Tupac. Can't <laughs> yeah. see me. Right. So. <laughs> Don't make it sing like annoying jingles that I can't get away from when the TV's on. Like, I want I want some fucking real shit, or I want it to just be bird noises. It's looking at me right now, like fuck you, fuck. <laughs> I like Andy Griff. Now I think the bird likes me because I give it all sorts of food, but it's like half an experiment to see if like it'll survive the food. And half like giving it a treat. <laughs> well, happened when we give this bird an Oreo, right? <laughs> you think I'm joking, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want a jalapeno, birdie? Look, if I'm gonna take care of this bird, you're, it's gonna eat some bullshit. <laughs> it's gonna eat the same bullshit I do. Yeah, if you're gonna live in this room. house, right? Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's great. Anyway. And this show was great because we padded it out. That was yes. like a fucking five minute story. Thank you, bird. <laughs> we kept it here for 27 minutes. So ah, take take that, suckers. You're trapped. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably not a show next week. Mm. Um, it, it depends. Like I said, we record on Thursdays. There's a good chance that uh, we'll be in the hospital this weekend delivering. I if that's going, the case, there's a shot that we'll be back Thursday. But uh, but I'm going to say not a show next week yeah. because I want to take a week off, I think. Oh, that works too. And if you have a kid, that's a perfectly good excuse. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, no, the funniest part is it won't be the kid. It'll be I'll, uh, I'll have killed myself on a skateboard by Thursday. So. Right, right, like I said, the kid, um, <laughs> which is... <laughs> <laughs> which is me that's so fucking fun please get your wife to take video if you <laughs> trying to shred and shit like that was such a random if you don't follow steve on twitter i understand but you should <laughs> because he, he got this random ass impulse to buy a skateboard yeah um everybody should be able to skate right yeah absolutely and like i said i've been it's been a few years for me, but I've been tempted to buy a new board. Um, but I, you know, I haven't. I didn't know. Have you skateboarded before? Like, nope. Was, okay, Never. so completely, completely midlife crisis. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's what it more is. Is I I watched a movie and it was not a great movie. I think it was just called the nineties. Um, it was actually written, I think, and directed by Jonah Hill. Uh, but okay. it follows a little kid that gets in with like the skating crowd in the nineties and whatever. And like, so it's not, a, it's not the worst movie, but it wasn't great, but it's all, you know, they're all skaters. And so a lot of movies about skating and hanging out at a skate shop. And I'm like, I've always like wanted to be cool. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be one of those skater dudes. There's nothing on earth that I could do to be cool. But like, <sighs> if you had a front side nolly back blunt, it's, it's not like I've never been interested in skating before. And then I watch that and I'm like, hey, wait, I'm old enough now that I can afford a skateboard. I'm like, like I'm buying fucking one. adult. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> right. It, it was more that realization. Yeah. You but, know, uh, and like I said, you know, it, it's fun. It's a fun hobby. Um, I am very curious how this experiment goes, though, because oh, I tell you, it'll be bad. It'll because be when you're that like teenage to like early 20s skating age, your body's a lot more durable for it. Yeah, that's what's funny. Um, I'm like watching all these videos on uh, 
not even videos. Like there's a Reddit group out there for new skaters. And, um, the first time I ever really like used Reddit too, cause I hate Reddit, but, um, you see these young kids that are new and it's like, Oh, I just tried this trick. And they like face plant into the ground at like 120 yeah. miles an hour. And they pop back up. They're like, I almost got it. Right. And then there's a lot of, there's a lot of people pick up skating when they're older or they skated in their like early teens and then haven't for 20 or 30 years. And then, in their forties decide to get back into it. Um, I'm not quite forties yet, by the way, but getting there. Um, the older skaters though, it's like, Oh yeah, I landed and slightly twist my ankle and I had to wear a cast for nine months. Right. It's like, well, like I love watching these videos where these guys are like trying to do a certain like trick combination on like a really tough staircase or a tough rail or something. And a lot of them, it's like a multi-day thing. They're just trying to get like, that brief like five second shot of this trick that's going to go in a compilation (laughs) video and it takes them days to nail it and like midway through they'll fucking just eat total shit and then they go to the hospital the doctor's like don't skateboard for three months and they come back tomorrow right go and hit the trick so but yeah my goal is not to be doing like tricks over you know steps and shit and you say that down but once the adrenaline hits <laughs> you'll land that I said first my goal ollie. is not that yeah my, my goal is to be able to ride a skateboard from my house to work on the bike path <laughs> that runs like, exactly Tara, put one the baby mile. down i'm gonna kick flip over it <laughs> <laughs> she's like i'm fucking putting you under That's arrest that. Now, I'd be happy if i can just like ride on a skateboard but there's a very good chance that that will never happen uh, but Tighten the trunks. That's yeah, that's my yeah. beginner's advice because a lot of people go I, loose because they want to like lean to turn and shit. No, and I, it's like that's how I've got zero balance. I want to be able to like dance a jig on the board and have it go straight. But yeah, so and I did, and that's the thing too because I I was talking to Tara about it too. I I've tried skateboarding like not like seriously, but we had like one of those jerk ass like five dollar plastic Walmart skateboards yeah, as a kid. Yeah. And this and that, and I was never good at it, but part of that is those boards suck, and right. even, like, experienced riders have trouble on them because they suck. Yeah, they, you like, you, you, there's a lot of fucking design that went into, like, modern skateboards. It's very impressive and very surprising, like, because you, you think, like, oh, that's just a chunk of wood. Um, but now it's, like, turns out every bend matters, every layer there matters. And, yeah, and, and quality is important, too. <laughs> right like the the wheels should spin at a, a as a constant rate and not like oh you know yeah once every three quarter turns it stops for a split it, second it, it's really fucked up though like i said like i see you talking about this shit on twitter and you're having a kid and i'm more excited about you getting a skateboard than your fucking child it, well because i'm I like, talking about oh, the man, skateboard more than i do awesome. the child though yeah i i've, I've, I've probably I decided to buy a skateboard a week ago, not even a week ago, Sunday, uh, Saturday morning. Um, and I've probably tweeted 13 times as much about that as I have this kid <laughs> that we've been pregnant with for nine months. Because you're like, oh, well, you know, she can get her own Twitter. You know? Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> but part of that's me. designed, too, because as soon as you mentioned that you used to skate and you haven't for a while, I'm like, I got to tweet about this until Ben takes it up, too. Yeah. Well, you know. It'll happen. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I have to. De- I have depressive states, you know, once a month. So it's just a matter of what I'll throw money at. And that go- that's like a double cure for that because it's not only like the I'm depressed. I want to spend money and see if it makes me happy. But if it doesn't, I might die. And then you're like, and cool. Yeah, that feeds into it too. It's like I might win, die win. being the most fucking cool guy on the street. <laughs> That's what my my wife asked me. Oh, what kind of like what design did you get on your board? <laughs> and I laughed. I'm like, I got a plain one. It's got a little logo from the company on it because I thought it would be a real asshole move to buy some like fancy ass board with like big graphic. And I can't even stand on a skateboard. That's no. That's not the. That's not the approach. You get the most expensive, elaborate <laughs> board you can find. <laughs> And then you just ruin the tail because you're still trying to learn all these. Um, uh, do the just do the mall kid thing where you carry it around by the trucks and you never actually ride. You just 
oh, walk yeah, around yeah. with it like, hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could get hurt. Uh, so, <laughs> so just hang on to that. But like I said, like most of the time I've really hurt myself. It was never trying to do tricks. It was always that like you're just going down the fucking sidewalk and like one little pebble doesn't agree with your wheel <laughs> and you go flying like fucking Superman off your board and then you just shred the entire side of your body. Yeah, see, that's the thing is, like you said, and I'm older and I I mean, I don't feel like 37 is ancient, but you're at that point where your body does not balance and it does not recover yeah. Like it used to. I mean, we noticed that five years ago with playing football, like we used to do. Me and my like friends. I'm like I'm like ten years younger than you, and I'm noticing that now. Like right, like I have no spring in my stuff. So I'm not above being. A, I would say the dork, but most skaters that I've like talked to or whatever or seen are like 100 percent for it. Especially if you're older. But I'll be wearing pads, but. Pads cost a lot of money, and I bought the board first, so there's going to be like some overlap. There's there. a window there where <laughs> right. I live dangerous. And I, to make it even best, that's the window where you have zero experience. Yeah, I, I'm what like people warn you about, like the attitude they warn you about when you're starting, because you should wear pads. Um, but for me, it's just like I, every I grew up skating without them, and. If I had, like, pads and shit on, it always annoyed me, and I felt like I couldn't, like, focus. Mm, yeah. Um, you, you know, especially knee pads. Fuck knee pads. They're they're probably the most important thing, and I fucking hate them. Uh, I'd say the wrist, wrist braces probably are, because you try to catch yourself. Even though... I forgot I'm at those least... were even pads. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> wrist braces. Like, my wrists are fucked. My I wrists am... are fucked playing video games and pounding on my desk. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's the funny thing too is I we actually trained on how to fall correctly in police academy in case you like when you for when you're in hand to hand combat. Oh yeah. Like you had to actually get up like on a chair and fall onto the ground and like learn how to and you you did it enough that cuz I <laughs> I do fall. I I I always joke this all the time. It's not. But the few times I've taken bad falls since then, I've always landed right like you're supposed to, like not put your wrist down and that stuff. But all it takes is one time, especially now I'm older and I'm fat and I've got all this weight like landing <laughs> on my wrist. But yeah. that's cool. Yeah, that would be fun. Uh, so, hey, yeah, even even more free content as we talk about how yeah. our bodies. Hey, are we kept it under we're thirty minutes, it. and here's ten minutes of talk on something that has nothing to do with the podcast. Whatever. Got to pad this out. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we'll we'll just take uh, the next week off, and then we'll we'll be back with more. more ben will be back. We might have to find a new host, but uh, yeah, co-host, yeah. but so guest starring Tony Hawk. <laughs> tell all right, Tony. Tell us what Steve did wrong. <laughs> he bought <laughs> and, a skateboard, <laughs> and Steve and Tony's just like eat everything. Every <laughs> <laughs> that's all you went mean, wrong. You mean regarding the skating thing, or just his entire life? Like, uh, I, hard to say <laughs> but yeah uh, so bye that's, that's what it comes down to bye later <laughs>